one. The Subcommittee on Emergency Preparedness, Response and Recovery will come to order. The subcommittee is meeting today to receive testimony on 20 years after 9-11, examining emergency communications. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare the subcommittee in recess at any point. Last month, our nation marked 20 years since the worst terrorist attack on US soil. The Committee on Homeland Security joined many of our colleagues from New York and New Jersey to visit the National September 11th Memorial and Museum and held a roundtable with first responders. We have also conducted several hearings on the evolution of the Department of Homeland Security and heard from our intelligence community regarding the current and emerging threats to our homeland. Today, the Emergency Preparedness Response and Recovery Subcommittee will examine the progress made in emergency communications since September 11, 2001, and discuss the challenges that may still persist, persist today. As you know from emergency managers and first responders who served on September 11th and the 911 Commission report, police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical services experienced significant problems communicating within their own agencies and with others who responded on that day. On the morning of September 11th, I was assigned to the Orlando International Airport as the commander of the Orlando Police Department Airport Police Division. As reports of the attack on the World Trade Center emerged and the Federal Federal Aviation Administration ordered all aircraft grounded. Airport and law enforcement leadership had to immediately execute emergency operations to protect passengers, employees, and the public. I know how the first responders felt in Orlando. I can't even begin to imagine all that the first responders on the ground experienced and went through in New York. My husband served in law enforcement as well, and I have two sons who are firefighters. My heart continues to go out to the families who lost loved ones that tragic day. Communications and inoperability are essential. First responders consider it their lifeline. Over the next Months and years, incredible progress has been made to address the undescribable challenges on September 11th and improve the nation's emergency communications apparatus through programs such as First Responder Network Authority and the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System. However, challenges in operability and interoperability still persist and our aging 911 infrastructure poses additional vulnerabilities. Operability and interoperability remain among the greatest concerns that first responders and public safety officials face. Tragedy and disaster can come, as we all know, in many forms. Climate change also poses significant and growing challenges for emergency communications. From rapid spreading wildfires in the West to increasingly strong and frequent hurricanes, cell towers and radio communication system remain vulnerable to critical failures. In August, Hurricane Ida, a powerful Category 4 storm, crashed the New Orleans, Louisiana 911 call center and FirstNet Authority, making it difficult, if not impossible, to respond to emergencies. Members of Congress, we know we have an important role in the improvement of emergency communications technology. We must continue to provide funding through grants, such as the State Homeland Security Program and the Ur Urban Area Security Initiative. These programs have provided critical federal funding for jurisdictions to buy equipment fix, build and fix communications towers and make broadband improvements. While grant programs such as URASI are created specifically for urban areas, we understand 
that rural communities and tribal lands face their own challenges with broadband and connectivity that can also complicate emergency response. Federal grants support these communities, but can always be more robust to meet the needs more completely. Though communications, interoperability, and resilient infrastructure are priorities for emergency and first responders, the public may only experience their benefit or challenges during times of crisis. Today's hearing will serve as an important forum to understand the current state of emergency communication systems and any gaps that may still persist. I am grateful today for the participation of our witnesses, and I look forward to your testimony. The chair now recognizes the ranking member of the subcommittee, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Kamek, for an opening statement.